Addy Soldiers, I finally got my ears pierced because I, as a 27-year-old lady, uh, went on one three-hour deep dive on Etsy looking at earrings and then Impulse made an appointment at my local body mods for like the next day. And I may or may not have a very large order of Etsy earrings on the way already. <laughs> Okay, so if you don't know me, hi, I'm Rachel. I like to read a lot of books and then I like to do deep dive literary criticisms of said books for fun. And since last week I did a video on deconstructing my prejudices towards romance novels, I feel like this is a good follow up because in today's video, I would like to analyze the reverse harem trope trend. Now, while I had this idea floating around for a little bit, the catalyst was actually because I saw a series of TikTok videos by author Shannon Elliott and Ashley Michelle X, and I will leave both of those videos in the description box, who are two people that write and read these reverse harem romance novels and how they decided that they are no longer going to be using that term uh, for what they write. The idea for this video started last month when I finished Wicked Beauty by Katie Robert, in which we have a power throuple of Helen, Achilles, and Patroclus, and I was reading this and thinking how much I like their dynamic, and then I noticed an uptick in all the spicy book recommendations that I was getting on TikTok, like all being reverse harems and something, something clicked up there, something happened up there, the hamster started running on the wheel, like someone put coal in the steam engine, and a couple of weeks of word vomiting into a Google Doc has gotten me to this point in front of you now. So I wanted to do, not a deep dive, but like a medium dive into the reverse harem trope and talk about kind of where it came from, how it's harmful, how it's good, why people like it, etc. I graduated university earlier this year and it's been like four months since I wrote an essay and already I can feel all of those years as an English major just slowly deteriorating as I no longer know how to write a good thesis statement for any of these videos. So without further ado, grab a drink, grab a snack, and buckle in while we talk about all the nuances and pitfalls of the reverse harem trend. Also, I apologize right off the bat for how much heteronormative language there's going to be in this video, uh, but as we all know, the straights are not okay. So first up on everyone's mind, what is a reverse harem? So a harem is a separate part of a polygamous household in which one man has many wives that is a specific woman's space that usually has wives, concubines, children, and female servants. This was also specifically for royalty and royal men because having a lot of wives and having a lot of heirs was a show of status and privilege. However, because this was an Eastern practice, the West came along, yoinked it, and then highly sexualized it in a way that it absolutely was not. The Islam term harem means forbidden place and it's supposed to be a safe space just for women that men are not allowed into and that's it so the term that we think of today harem of one man having a lot of highly sexualized partners is incredibly orientalist but the romance genre got a hold of the term harem and ran with it without really considering the history behind what that space is supposed to be and what that word means because it's western culture and of course we didn't in book world a reverse harem is when there is one female character who has a variety of male lovers. So it's sort of like a love triangle, except there's usually more people. So it's not like a love triangle. It's like a love square or like a love polycule or like a love octagon. But where love triangles and RH books differ is that in RH books, the main character gets to have all of the people instead of eventually choosing one to be monogamous with. And the partner she has can be gathered from different places, but they usually enter the story all at the same time. Sometimes they're like brothers or cousins, which I think is weird, but mostly they're like a group of close friends or some kind of sect of people, like a vampire clan or mafia bros or roommates. Oh my God, they were roommates. <laughs> but something that is very important that is the keystone to these RH books is that all members involved enter voluntarily consensually into that relationship and they all know ahead of time what they are getting into. Now maybe you're thinking that a group of dudes would not want to share a partner and you know there's gonna be massively men trying to fight people and prove that they're a better caveman hunter that can bring home Dear, what are men like these days? I don't know. In these circumstances, the men's love towards the main character is enough to get them all to agree with one another, or sometimes they know ahead of time they're gonna have to share a girl, which usually is those like bonded fate mate books. And they usually all get together based on external circumstances. You know, they all have to spend a certain amount of time together because of X, Y, or Z. And then, oh, hey, we fall in love along the way because you're all sexy. Now, all the men or just a couple of the men may take issue or 
or have a moment of doubt when it comes to sharing the heroine. However, the heroine usually establishes throughout a series of events that she does care and want each of the men in turn. Now see, the key part of this is that all of the men have to be cool with the dynamic especially how they relate to one another in that dynamic and the relationship that they see between their friends and the woman. There can be guilt or confusion or jealousy, but it must be resolved by the time that the relationship is established as a relationship. So now we talked about all the men, but what about the woman? Like, what does she get? Usually the reason the woman is drawn to multiple partners is because each of them brings out a certain part of herself. You know, you have like, the flirty one, and then you have like the sensitive one, and then you have like the tough one. However, there must be a reason why she likes all of them individually, and it can't just be because they find each other sexy. Now this doesn't have to happen if it's like a one-shot hookup kind of novella, but if this is going to be an established relationship, there has to be some kind of legitimate connection between the main character and each of the heroes. There should be individual scenes of the main character and one other hero bonding. Now, after saying all that, maybe some of you are like, huh, you know, that sounds a little bit familiar. Like, where have I heard that before? The main critique of reverse harem novels is that this is just repackaged polyamory. Polyamory is a social practice in which one person will have multiple sexual and or romantic partners, uh, sometimes with a primary partner that they spend the most time with, and sometimes they will spend their time with all their partners equally. Sometimes their partner have separate partners from them, and sometimes it's a big group of people that are kind of all dating each other. Just like some people are monogamous with one partner, people who are polyamorous have multiple partners, and if you agree with your partner or partners about those practices, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, go live your life. But because our Western society still favors monogamy and it's mostly Western writers who are writing these reverse harem novels, reverse harem is just the new term that is incorrectly describing polyamory. Like sometimes it's a one-to-one -one swap of what that means in the book, but a lot of the times it's not. Because polyamory is still a bit taboo, it has a stigma against it, the poly rep in media is usually not very favorable. When a TV show or movie has a poly character, it's usually played for drama and there's usually like the, the couples or the people in the relationship are fighting and they're people who are super jealous or there's like these super aggressive multi-person sex scenes. And because you are in such a group dynamic, things like communication, time management, jealousy, safe sex, prioritizing partners, money, all of that communicated is hella important. I'm like, yes, in monogamous relationships too, but we're not talking about those right now. Partners within poly relationships can have boundaries and rules with one another, but they are not trying to cheat on one another and they, unless discussed, should not be trying to keep somebody away from exploring other people to love. Another thing that a lot of people say about polyamory is they go, oh, so it's a sex thing. And like, okay, let's break that down. So in poly romance novels, you know, having threesomes, foursomes, and moresomes is absolutely a sub sub trope of that trope. But there's also a lot of different types of romantic or sexual encounters that you can have with somebody. Like any type of relationship, real or fictional, it is up to the people in that relationship to decide what they are comfortable with and where their boundaries are. Something another poly friend of mine said is that to be polyamorous, you are not splitting your heart, you are splitting your time. And they told me that was because they liked feeling that deep love connection with more than one person. What the romance book community has decided to start doing instead of calling it a reverse harem to call it a polyam book. They could also say, this is my polycule romance, or my personal favorite, why choose? <laughs> I just think that's adorable. Like, this is my why choose romance. I'm like, oh my god, I love that. Editing Rachel here. I feel like I didn't do a good enough job describing this the way that I wanted to in the original video. So, hi. So not all reverse harem branded books are a good or realistic depiction of what polyamory is. However, people are deciding to start calling reverse harem books poly books. Even though polyamory is still looked down upon, it doesn't have the same racial connotation to it. And some poly people may say, well, if you're rebranding something with polyamory without having all of the same connotations to it, or only some of what it means to be polyamorous in this book, 
that's gonna give us a bad reputation. But then to that I would say there's also so many books with monogamous couples that are not good depictions of monogamy. And non-monogamy is not a one-size-fits-all. The relationship is its own type of escapism regardless of if it's poly or monogamous. Okay, I hope all that made sense. Back to the video. So full disclosure, this next section uh, originally was not here. It was actually in between the what reverse harems are and what polyamory is. But just like uh, the impulse to get my ears pierced, I impulsively am putting it here. So it's a little out of place, but like we're still gonna make it work. But I wanted to talk about why people like these why choose romances, but I wanted to be able to refer to them as why choose and not RH because as we just discussed, uh, we're rebranding. Now if you take even five seconds to type in polycule romance on book talk or on the wild wild west of Kindle Unlimited, you are going to find bank. You are going to find a ridiculous amount of these stories. So obviously the people like them and by the people I mean me. <laughs> and others, because these why choose romances are the ultimate female fantasy. Because women, or people who are socialized as women in our society, are taught that they need to not only find a man, they need to make sure that he is happy. So you need to please the man, you need to make sure that you pay attention to his pleasure and his needs and to make him happy. And even if you do all those things, there is a chance that he will still cheat or leave you. So a why choose romance is the epitome of a reverse social standard, is a woman who is being actively pursued by men that she finds attractive. And those men who are usually like supernaturally sexy or very physically powerful, those men are willing to put aside their differences and their jealousy to make sure that she has the most pleasure and attention within the relationship. So if you're then raised in a society that centers men's pleasure, but now there are all these attractive people who are making sure it's you that get the attention and pleasure and respect, hot. Also, I just got this fan a couple weeks ago at a pride event and I'm just like, oh, Oh, it's so good. And you can also have all of the aspects of a traditional happily ever after romance. You just have it with more people. And to wrap up this video, I'm going to recommend some of my favorite why choose romances uh, to give you maybe a starting point if this is something that you want to explore. We might as well start with the one that started this whole thing. Let's talk about Wicked Beauty by Katie Robert. This is the third in her Dark Olympus series. They can be read separately, but there is a through line that connects all of them. In this world, the Greek gods are not gods, but they are positions of power. And this book centers around a competition to determine who is going to be the next Ares. We focus on our trio of Achilles, Patroclus, and Helen, who all have their own reasons for wanting the position of power. But as the competition grows deadlier, the three of them realize they can only trust one another and shenanigans occur. I really like that Achilles and Patroclus are a well-established loving couple before Helen joins us. And then we explore the way that both of them are attracted to her and she's attracted to both, but they don't know why. Now, Katie Robert is known for her spicy books. And I will say this is top tier spice, but the sex and the romance is interspersed with them talking to one another about what's happening and how they all feel about it. And then like working on certain parts of themselves. And then eventually at the end, you know, we all get together and then we decide that we're gonna be up dynamic poly power thruple, and I love to see it. Okay, this next one is going to bother me just a little bit. I feel like I had to do Wicked Beauty first because that was the catalyst to this video. Uh, but now following up with this book, just like very thematically does not make sense. Um, but we're gonna put it in there anyway because I feel like it's probably like the OG power thruple book that a lot of us read. And that is Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. <laughs> okay, but wait, wait, wait. I know I just talked about sex for a little bit and how sex and romance play into this whole why choose phenomenon, but I'm gonna be talking about a couple YA books in here because they do thematically match quickly. Just do some housekeeping. Uh, let's not sexualize minors, okay? Don't make it weird. To my knowledge, this is probably one of the first, if not the first, polyam YA book, even though we didn't call it that at the time. And I've touted this book for years as being the ultimate shining star of an example of how to write a good love triangle. But recently I kind of reevaluated what I see in this. And this is a love triangle, but it's a closed triangle. In case for some reason you don't know, this is a Victorian era Shadowhunters novel in the same universe as Immortal Instruments where we have demons and witches and warlocks with Will and Jem being bonded Parabati, AKA warrior brothers. And both of them fall in love with 
with our main character Tessa and Tessa falls in love with both of them in turn. The reason I say this works is because there is so much love within the triangle. Like Will and Jem are not romantically or sexually attracted to one another, but they have this deep friendship bond and they would do anything to make sure that the other person is happy. And the connection that Will and Tessa feel is different than the connection that Jem and Tessa feel. There's no jealousy or possessiveness. This relationship between all of them is just so full of love and connection and selflessness. And actually, accidentally, I found this quote uh, from this book while I was looking for other quotes and felt like it matched the theme of this video. So let me read it to you. Maybe you should stop pitying yourself, Magnus said. Most people are lucky to have even one great love in their life. You have found two. Another older YA slash new new adult novel <laughs> was the rage-fueled mechbot masterpiece that was Iron Widow by Shirin J. Zhao. In the city of Huasha, there are these giant metal mech bots that fight our wars against the aliens. And to pilot one of these bots, you need a male pilot and a female concubine pilot who will join spirit energies that will fuel the robot. And often the woman ends up dying. Our main character Zetan volunteers as part of a revenge plot and ends up killing her male co-pilot. She's then teamed up with Shimin, who is the most ferocious male pilot out there in hopes that he can tame her spirit energy. But instead the two of them just end up joining forces and becoming a dynamic duo, kicking ass and taking names. But then once they're in the capital, Zetan's childhood friend joins them in the palace and they end up falling in love with one another, all three of them. And then they just become this amazing poly power thruple who's definitely going to cause some damage to that government structure, let me tell you. This is an especially good example as to how a triangle is the most stable shape and how we have that one kind of mediator in between two very strong personalities. Zaytan is very brash and angry, whereas Shimin is a little bit more prickly and standoffish. But Yiji is sweeter and softer and knows how to calm both of them down, but also knows how to support both of them and has some practical political power that they can throw around very subtly. <laughs> the three of them balance each other out quite well, so they don't only become partners in life, but partners in crime. <laughs> Those are the only three that I have physically, so from now on I will just wave my hand and editing Rachel will put some photos in. Now if you want a similar why choose paranormal story, I would recommend Captive by Wolves by Eva... Eva... Reed? Captive by Wolves by... Eva Chase, I was close. This is a sweeter, slightly sci-fi paranormal book about werewolves who are like also fairies, so like fair wolves, but also magic science blood, where our main character has been held in a facility for multiple years giving blood for a reason that she doesn't know. And on the night that she manages to escape the facility, she runs into my pack of wolf boys and they take her back to their compound house mansion and nurse her back to health. Even though this is a pretty cute book overall, I would check the trigger warnings on this one because there's a lot of medical and abuse related things. But this is one of the sweeter ones where our main character has to learn how to trust again and watching all these men give her different reasons to trust them is very heartwarming. Also she has pink hair so like that's cool. And even though I don't say this often, I think this is a circumstance in which the possessive trope does work in a way that doesn't squick me out. I like how our soft, quiet, kind main character changes the men individually. The way that she kind of makes them reevaluate their behavior and then they all end up being better people. <laughs> and while there is a little bit of spice, this is definitely a sweeter, more romantic poly... Was there four? Maybe there's five? I can't quite remember, it's been a while. But this is a good beginner one. This is like a baby's first MMF kind of, kind of vibe. Has this ever happened to you? You, a voracious romance reader, want to read some kind of fairy book that's not Akotar or The Cruel Prince. You want a variety of sexy, paranormal men to choose from, along with a strong, capable, magical main character who forges weapons in her spare time. I think you do. I would highly recommend you check out With an Obsession and Lies by Stacey Jones and Harper Wilde. Our main character Arwen is a new adult who doesn't understand these powers that she has. And she has three magical men with the voices of phone sex operators who come into her life to help her control it and discover her destiny. I like this take on fairies, how all of the magical creatures of our world, like vampires or demons or mermaids, are actually just fairies that have escaped from their realm and their powers are slowly waning. So they turn into these monsters of myth. Now I do find this book to be very silly. However, the communication in here is top notch. Hands down, Viper is my favorite. Love a goofball sociopath who could kill me at any time. <laughs> this is one of those Faded Mates polyam books, but I like how because each of the men has a different social and magical standing within their world, how their dynamic gets shifted once they become mates with Arwen and like how 
all of them, now that they're all together, how they act to uplift and support one another within their society. And the sexy times in this book were also so well done. And I say that because were there a lot of them? Yes. But none of them ever felt forced. There were always a reason for them to happen. And it actually impacted the relationships of everybody involved. And I, I just thought that it was so good. <laughs> and one that I just recently finished was Faking with Benefits by Lily Gold, which is a adorable contemporary polyam foursome. Our main character, Layla, is 28, never had a boyfriend, and is kind of sick of it. So she asks her three hot neighbors to act as her fake boyfriends and like train her how to date. But of course, as training gets more and more intense, uh, some feelings get thrown into the mix. And soon friendship is not the only thing that any of them are thinking of. This is a book where we get points of view of all characters and I really liked seeing how all the guys are thinking of certain things and how Layla's reacting to each of them and then all of them coming together and having like friendship time but then also like sexy times and like their dynamic is really really good. I also liked the real world application of a polyam foursome especially if you post about that on social media or if you show up to an event with more than one date but also how the expertise of each person's lived life can help you in a relationship and like strengthen your bond for example one of them helps with like her business expenses and like that's a useful skill to have that's a useful skill to bring to any relationship this is both spicy and ultra sweet and i had a really good time reading it also i never thought i'd be saying so many good things about three white men with a podcast um but you know what? Stranger things have happened. <laughs> and lastly, is one that I actually haven't read and I was trying really hard to read it before I filmed this video, but then like scheduling just didn't work out. It's okay. We're improvising, adapting, overcoming. And that is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson, which I have seen all over book talk. Like all my mutuals are recommending it. And this is because this is about the Brides of Dracula. Where our main character, Constanta, is taken from her peasant life and transformed into a bride fit for royalty. But then we find out that, oh man, her husband's like actually kind of a bad guy. And she finds love in the arms of the other consorts that he keeps. But then all of the women start to work together to unravel the dark secrets of their husband. And you have to choose between freedom and the people that you love and blood and death and it sounds great. Usually I don't recommend books on here that I haven't read, but I've heard so many good things about this, including people whose opinions I really trust. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that this is probably most likely 98% a good choice. <laughs> and with that small addition, that is that on that. Oh wait, I have to give you like a good English major conclusion wrap up paragraph. Here we go. The reverse harem trope in media has a different connotation than it does in history. The term reverse harem is highly orientalist and so it is going out of fashion in favor of terms like polyam romances, polycule, or why choose. But the public tends to have a misunderstanding of what polyamory is, which leads to some misrepresentation in these types of why choose polyam books. Polyamory and RH are not the same thing, but they do have similarities. But it can also act as education or a learning space uh, for yourself or for other people to like see how those types of relationships can work. Authors and readers like these things because, you know, it adds romance, it adds tension, it allows a main character to explore different parts of themselves, and it allows for some spicier scenes with multiple people involved. Plus, it allows the reader to explore the taboo of having multiple partners or multiple people that you have deep loving connections with in a safe and accepting environment. Which is why I'm such an OG stan of the Clockwork series, or even her other one, I think in Lady Midnight. I forgot about that. Doesn't Christina have like a poly thing with Diego and Mark? I know it was just hinted at, but still, the fact that that exists in a young adult, I think is a really cool thing because it allows for people to like know that that's an option for them in the future. And that's another thing, right? Every time normal, you know, wasp society sees something that they don't identify with, it's, oh, that's a sex thing, isn't it? It's like, no, not all the time. Like, yes, sometimes, not all the time. It's about connection and love and exploring yourself and your own identity. And sometimes you need multiple people to do that. And so romance novels that have more than one love interest is like a fun thing to read about. Please leave your favorite polyam, polycule, or why choose a romance books in the comments below. Oh my God, what time is it? Holy, what? I've been filming this video for three and a half hours. Oh my, I'm probably only have like 15 minutes worth of footage too. Jesus, my camera overheated five times trying to film this video. So we're just gonna wrap this up real quick so I can turn my AC unit back on. I'm sorry I'm complaining about the heat so much, but I'm really good at it. And if the internet's taught me anything, it's that if you're good at something, 
monetize it. You know where to click like the video. You know where to click to subscribe. I hope you guys are all having a nice day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you all next week. Bye!